Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden and today I'm here to talk about the 12 books, 12 friends, 12 months challenge. I hope I got the order of those phrases right. Did I? I don't know. The template that I was using is created by at Shadow Booker. I will link their social media down below. Um, and this is the first year that I'm participating in this. You basically just put out a call <laughs> to your uh, online bookish friends um, asking them to pick a book that they would like you to read. Generally it's one that like that person has already read and loved or they're very curious for you to read to hear your thoughts on or um, there can be a lot of different reasons. So I'm doing that for the first year and I am really excited. Also, I am so, so happy at the variety of like age ranges, genres, kinds of stories. Like that just makes me so happy. That's something that I really value in my reading. And I love that you guys have like contributed to that as well. Like I have nonfiction, I have a picture book, I have some contemporary, some uh, fantasy, sci-fi. Um, yeah, I just, I'm really excited about this lineup. Um, and actually I have a really good mix of like some books that I have been wanting to get to for a long time, a couple that weren't on my radar, um, some that I like actually already own or that I was like planning to get. So it's going to be great. Let's get into it. I'm just going to go in the order of like when people responded. Um, so Margaret from The Word Nerd, she wants me to read The Half-Built Garden by Ruthanna Emrys. Um, this is a like post-apocalyptic but in a like a hope punk kind of way and it's a first contact story and I've heard that it's very like cozy in a way and very like warm and again kind of like hopeful um and I, I've heard really interesting things about it this wasn't one I was planning to pick up so I think it's going to be really exciting to read it so thank you Margaret and I definitely don't read enough sci-fi so this is going to be great uh then Julia from Shakespeare and Such picked Always Never Yours by Emily Wiberly and Austin Sequin Broca. I have been meaning to get to this for so long. Um, this is a contemporary that is a very, very loose take on Romeo and Juliet uh, because our main character is like sort of like a Rosalind character, but not really. Um, basically, like every guy that she dates, they break up and then he immediately finds his soulmate <laughs> and she's kind of tired of it. So they do a like high school production of uh, Romeo and Juliet or like a like a retelling maybe of Romeo and Juliet. I just think this will be super fun. You guys know I love Shakespeare. I love kind of Shakespeare adjacent stories so I can't wait to get to this. Also Rosalind is like my girl. Uh, is that primarily because I adore her and still star-crossed? Yes, but it still counts. Um, then Brianna from Four Paws and a Book picked Year of the Reaper by Makia Lucier or Lucier. Uh, this is a fantasy. You can see I actually have a bookmark in it because I read the first chapter a while back and was really enjoying it. I just like had other things I was reading at the time. I think this was, you know, sometimes when you're trying to decide what to read and you're like, you're in a specific mood, but you can't figure out what it is. I think it was like that. So I was really enjoying it. I'm so glad that Brianna picked this one because this is yet another one that I've been excited about and I want to read. This is a fantasy following our two leads, Kat and Lena. Cass is a soldier who um, has been through a lot. I think he was like left for dead maybe. And he's just, he just wants to get home and like forget everything horrible that happened. And he's drawn into it, the search for a killer because it, an assassin is targeting those closest to the queen. So he ends up getting brought into like this conflict and this politics again. And then Lena is a brilliant young historian. Um, and I think I'm, I think I'm really going to like their dynamic and like this story and the world. So thank you, Brianna. I'm very excited to have an extra reason to read this one. Then Olivia Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe picked Consumed, The Need for Collective Change, Colonialism, Climate Change, and Consumerism by Aja Barber. Um, this is a nonfiction book that, again, I hadn't heard of until Olivia Savannah talked about it, and I'm really interested to read it. Um, obviously, climate change is something everyone should care about and be very involved in because it affects all of us. Um, and I think this is going to, as it says, it connects that to colonialism and consumerism. So I'm really eager to see what this author has to say, and especially about like how obviously like collective action is like the main thing that's going to help but also how like as an individual person you can contribute to that. I'm also curious to see um, if she has any advice on like being atten intentional with the things you do acquire um, as opposed to just like kind of the minimalism aesthetic you know which is like not really my thing like I'm not like a capsule wardrobe kind of person but I do still care very much about like you know, sustainable like consumption and ethical consumption and all of that. Then Hana from Balgans and Books picked As Long as the Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Katu. Um, I know this is one of Hana's favorite books of the year and I was actually really hoping she'd pick this one because the way she talked about it just made me like want to buy it and read it immediately. Like I actually, I think I bought this like right after her re review because it's one that I had been really excited about but then just the way she talked about it I was like this needs to happen right now. Um, yeah, blurbed by like a ton of well-loved authors. 
and this is a story that is set in Syria um, around the time of the Syrian revolution or I think like during the time of the Syrian revolution um, and our main character is Salama and she was a pharmacy student and so she ends up staying behind to um, like help with medical care and everything and um, she's afraid for her life and she kind of wants to get out but then she also is like not wanting to like abandon these like people in this place that she loves and um, I think this book deals a lot with like the perception of the Syrian revolution by like western countries and like western media um, and the way that that is framed and I yeah I think it just sounds incredible I know it's very emotional but it's gonna be really beautiful and very hopeful as well like I think from the sounds of things it's going to balance like that grief but also that hope and the beauty and the joy and then um Salama ends up getting, developing PTSD very understandably and it actually ends up taking physical shape in the form of her companion Kalf um who haunts her every move so I think that sounds like a really interesting way to like physicalize something like PTSD. I think I'm gonna get very attached to these characters. I think the themes are gonna be right up my alley and I've also heard that there is a really lovely romance as well so Thank you, Hana. I'm so glad to have an extra excuse to read this one. Um, then, Becca from the Book Sanctum picked Into the Spotlight by Carrie Hope Fletcher. Um, and this is perfect because I actually bought several Carrie Hope Fletcher books on Becca's recommendation like a little while ago, and I haven't gotten to read any of them, which is ridiculous because I think I'm going to really love them. Um, like Becca has specifically recommended them to me, and I've been meaning to get to them, so this is the perfect opportunity. Um, this is a short middle grade contemporary, and I think it is a kind of retelling of the ballet shoe story which I I know I've seen the movie and I think I may have read the book like once a really long time ago when I was much younger oh and this is illustrated by Kirsten Egan as well so I think it's going to be a lot about like family and found family and I think it's these three kids who have to come together to try and save a theater um so Becca obviously knows me so I am very excited for that then one that I I'm kind of nervous for. Um, the Binding by Bridget Collins. This is a book, like I, there's several friends of mine who really love this book and who it's like one of their favorite books. Um, and this is a pick from Kimberly at Awen. I, I will link her down below. I don't remember her exact username. Um, we would always just call her like Awen during our Princess Harding read-along. Um, but Awen gave me like a few to pick from and this is the one I decided to choose because I have been meaning to get to this forever. I've owned this book for so long. Um, and this is a very kind of atmospheric fantasy and I've heard that it is very kind of like slow and quiet in a way um, and it deals with grief and trauma in a really interesting way because in this world there are people called bookbinders um, but what they do is yes they bind books but in this world books are actually like the way that you can contain like a traumatic or a horrible memory like anything that people want to forget they can have it bound into a book and then one day our main character Emmett um ends up finding a book with his name on it and he has no memory of doing this and so it's about that I know there is also a male male romance in this that is supposed to be really lovely um yeah I just this is gonna be this is one of those books that like I know the premise and I've heard the premise a lot but I have no idea what the actual reading experience is gonna be like um so I'm very very curious then Kier from Kier the Scrivener picked When We Were Alone by David A. Robertson, illustrated by Julie Flett. Um, I have read a couple of books illustrated by Julie Flett before that were really beautiful. Um, and this is, of course, a picture book that Kier read and really enjoyed. And I hadn't heard of this one before her, uh, before she was talking about it. And I believe this is about um, a couple of Native children who are... Um, I think it, I think maybe they end up talking to the grandparents maybe about their experiences um, being forcibly taken to residential schools and um, these children are like asking their family like well why like why do we speak this language like why do we use these beaded um, clothing like why why is this so important and their family uses that to like tell them like this is why we do what we do and this is why like we've reclaimed this and I think that that just sounds really incredible and really important so I'm very glad to read that one and I love that there's a picture book on this list. Then Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly picked How the Word is Passed, A Reckoning with the History of Slavery Across America by Clint Smith. Um, this is a nonfiction book that I heard only incredible things about. Um, Kelly obviously loved it and it was one of her favorite books that she read. Um, I think this last year maybe or last year is when she read it and this is kind of set up as like um, Clint Smith and I think it's his son maybe um, like they're going on like family trips and they're visiting various places that are connected to African-American history here in the U.S. and it's kind of talking about like the way that history is told and 
like, like the way that it should be told and I've heard that it is obviously very intense but that it is so well done and I know that Clint Smith is a poet and so it's very beautifully written as well and um, yeah, this won the National Book Critics Circle Award for nonfiction. Then Katie from A Sea of Tomes picked The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater. Uh, this is another one that I have owned for a really long time, so I'm very glad it's on this list. Um, and this is a fantasy novel that like involves a race. Like every November there's like the Scorpio races where riders attempt to keep hold of their water horses long enough to make it to the finish line. Um, and it's deadly. Like these horses like will kill people. Not everyone even survives uh, to like finish the race, much less win the race. And we are following a couple of characters who are participating. Um, Puck apparently never meant to ride in the Scorpio races, but now she has to. And then Sean Kendrick is the returning champion. Um, and so obviously there's going to be very high stakes, a lot of conflict. And I've heard, I've, like, I think I'm going to really enjoy this one. Like, the things that I've heard about the story and the atmosphere just make me think I'm going to really enjoy it. Then Annalisa Ely picked The Sea in Winter by Christine Day. Um, this is another one I'm so glad to have an extra excuse to read. I'm sorry I keep repeating that, but it's true. I'm very excited about this project and how it's, like, pushing me to read things that, like, I am already really looking forward to. Um, I've owned this for a little while actually. Um, I really loved I Can Make This Promise by Christine Day and I haven't read the scene Winter yet. I believe it's about a young girl who is dealing with um, a recovery from a knee injury and I think maybe depression as well. Um, I think it's so important that middle grade books show kids dealing with things related to mental health and um, I think, yeah, I, I loved I Can Make This Promise so I think I'm gonna love this one as well and I've read um, like short stories by Christine Day that I also thought were fantastic. So she's pretty much like a favorite author for me at this point. And um, I'm glad to be reading this one this year. And then the last one, um, Huck from Badger Reads picked Alphabet of Thorn by Patricia A. McKillop. Um, and this is the only one on this list that actually the person who chose it has not read. Huck said she hasn't read this one yet, but she wants to try it. And so she wants to know like um, what I'm going to think of it. And another reason is uh, Huck's mom really loved this. So if you guys have been watching our like crafting live streams, like we've talked about this a couple times, but basically Huck's mom and I have like almost identical reading tastes. Like it's really funny um actually like the the amount of overlap we have and so this is going to be kind of a continuing experiment because um huck hasn't had great luck with patricia mckilla but like apparently her mom has read a few and the alphabet of thorn is her favorite so i'm excited to continue this experiment and see if me and huck's mom are still book twins um yeah i don't know too much about i really love like these um this art who's the artist of these i can't remember there we go. Kanuko Y Craft. Yes, I love their artwork. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. This this edition doesn't have like the synopsis on the back, so I can't remember exactly what it's about, but I think it's like the mysterious alphabet that somebody translates, and I've never read a Patricia McKillop book, even though I've been meaning to, so this I think will probably be my first one. Okay, everybody, so those are the 12 books that I will be reading for this challenge this year. Um, it, it actually worked out great because a lot of them were ones I already owned, a few of them were ones that I had been like planning to own, um, and then like a couple are ones that hadn't been on my radar and I'm curious to try. So I think we have a great variety here in terms of like, I don't know how these books ended up on my list or like if they were on my list. Also genre and age range, you guys know that's something I love. And a lot of these are ones that I am really, really excited about. Like all of these basically I'm excited about. Like a couple of them I'm a little nervous for, like The Binding, but even though I'm a little nervous, I'm still looking forward to finally reading it, you know? Anyway, I'm just rambling. Uh, let me know if you guys are participating in this challenge or let me just know a book that you are really excited to read in the new year, um, a book that you've been recommended. I don't know. Let me know anything. And thank you, of course, to all of my bookish friends who suggested books for me to read. I'm excited about these. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!